intake manifolds. It makes you wonder when some people say that some in this intake manifold works and this doesn't and also we see the results and you wonder where do they get the answers from, right? Or how do they know? And so we will talk about that. And even though our examples are Honda based, this will work for even other platforms, including VW. We will talk about the induction changes and the benefits of different style. And of course, we will talk about how we port our intake manifold, why we port it, and for all the reasons to make more power. And also measure the runner length and calculate the intake runner harmonics on the second harmonic or even the third harmonic. And of course, show you guys what's important to cams, compression, and RPM. intake manifold that we are porting here as you can see this is before cutting it and of course the type r that we did before we're going to show you the stuff that we did and what's needed to be done in order to improve the efficiency of the intake manifold of course and also the skunk 2 pro series d16 or single overhead cam intake manifold this is the original one not china so this one the casting is really good and if you remember we actually talked about this on the previous video on the throttle body that will have the link in the description below we'll talk about this sequence and the function of the intake manifold or like how the actual intake manifold functions and does its work so let's go and as you can see here filling up the plenum really good is really important so the cylinder number one fires in and gets efficient and then three and then four and then two right so this is the sequence and if you keep watching it you'll understand that you can have all the things really good but if the plenum volume is not filled really well we're gonna have inadequate flow or function on each cylinder so of course enable for us to reach the good plenum fill we have to understand this part on the intake pipe right or the ram, ram air like this as you can see, the length of the cold air intake helps stack air into the plenum, right? So even if, if the piston is in the compression stroke, the valves are closed, this stacks in more to the plenum, filling it really good. And that is why on the dyno, we see people or us run this velocity stack. It gives more power. And even Jasper's EF that runs 12 seconds. And you, the video of this is going to be in the description below and of the RAM air that we designed. And of course, some data logs talking about the details and why we're developing such things and you can see this the description below will have the link for this right and all of this helps fill the plenum really really good this way during operation for the engine the plenum is filled really good so each runner gets a good flow path towards the chamber now the next step is of course how to improve the transition from the plenum into the runner the, that makes more efficiency and of course power so now let's go talk about that and so as you improve the intake portion or the intake pipe portion via cold air intake like this or even a velocity stack up front that's the sort of like a front faced ram air system like what we've done here and we talked about the function of the intake manifold so here's what we do to further improve now here is a side view of the p30 runner of the intake manifold right and here is the outline of the internal wall of the port this is the size that we get in stock form and because our goal is to fill the plenum really well it goes to the intake port so this is how we port the intake manifold to gain even more efficiency you see that we increase the taper so as you can see, as the air is from the plenum into the intake runners, the efficiency is going to get even better. And increasing airspeed or port speed, that actually improves your cylinder head port flow. 
so it makes a, a, even a stock head perform even better. Now here is a Skunk 2 D16 intake manifold, the side profile, and you can see here the inside walls are this. This is the intake ports unported or the intake runner that's unported and I ported it this way as you can see it increases taper and therefore it increases airspeed or improves airspeed right and hopefully you can visualize what I'm trying to say here as you can see the increased taper actually improves the induction phase of the engine if you remember seeing a diagram of, of a four stroke sequence this improves cylinder filling therefore in the compression stroke it's even better and hopefully that's making more sense on how the intake manifold works and what makes it even more functioning better or function better sorry so here's the unfinished or semi-finished skunk 2 pro manifold and then here you can see on this angle you can see we're opening it up and increasing taper right and here's the p30 and now this look that's gonna be even better when it comes to flow or, or airspeed. That's gonna fill the cylinder and the chamber really well, right? Now look at this. This is a Skunk 2 Pro Series for a B Series engine. It's more like a Type R, an ITR, and here's the internal walls, as you can see. You know, we all know that's how it is, right? And the reason why this is ported really well, or easy to port really well, look at that, look at those taper, right? from the stock form and to increasing taper, it looks really good. And you know this is gonna flow really well, right? And before we talk about runner length and start calculating the harmonics for the third harmonic on the performance side of things, I know some of you guys would wonder how much taper should we do or how much taper is okay. And before we get to that, let me talk about these things first. A lot of our friends there in the US already know what's up and also already know better. Like for example, there are many places they can go for a head porting or even intake manifold porting, but just because it's ported, it doesn't mean it's already good because there are places that can port it and just, you know, it doesn't really work, right? So just because it's ported, it doesn't mean it's already good. However, locally, the problem I see is that because we continue to share such information, they already think they can DIY this and it'll be as good but the problem with that is if you actually play guitar like i do i can hand you the tabs or the tablature for note for note for a song and you'll know how to play it note for note but it will never sound as fluid and as normal as it should because it's all about muscle memory and it takes years to develop that so we're showing you everything here but it doesn't mean it's easily replicatable you know or, or replicable sorry because if you when you think about it i've been porting heads since 2004 that's more than 18 years and that includes engine builds and i've been tuning ecu tuning since 2006 that's actually more than 14 or 15 years or actually 16 years right so when you think about it it takes time to develop certain skills and knowledge. So, you know, this is why we share this to, to help you guys be more aware. This way you don't get scammed by the local shops. The local shops don't explain much, they'll just, you know, just yank your money from you, right? And okay, going back to the technical stuff. And of course, some of you guys would wonder how much taper is needed to be able to improve the intake manifold like this. This is so much taper and actually punch hole through it and have it had it rewelded again. And the question is, right, how much taper? And, you know, physically, the intake manifold that we have any of the model or the base is not enough and here's the itb 54 millimeter entry on this and 48 at the plate right and this my single overhead cam itb is 50 at the opening and 42 millimeter at the plate so it tapers really good right so we take off this velocity stack and put it next to the manifolds let's go and look, this is the unported one. Look at that. The velocity stack, the SOC and the B-series are way bigger than the intake manifold, though, even if we can port it, right? And even after shaping the SOC Skunk 2 intake manifold, this here you can see the 
SOC ITB entry is still way, way bigger, right? So how much taper? More than it's possible. So even here on this Skunk 2 ITR style for the B series, it's gotten big, right? I mean, you know, we expanded really good, but look, the velocity stack for the ITB for the SOC is still a lot bigger, right? So hey, you can never get too much taper. From the existing physical size of the intake manifold that we have, be it Type R or even a P30 or a SOC. Now let's go back to the runner length. This P30 has about 9 inches in runner length and so with a port length of uh, around 3.5, that's 12.5 total induction length. So now let's calculate the intake harmonics in this order. So let's go. And now, as you can see here, the third harmonic for the 12.5 inches induction length is the pole strength is from 7,000 to around 8,000 RPM, right? And the second harmonic is also higher from 9.3 or almost 9.4 all the way to 11,400 RPM. But let's go back to something more realistic. On the third harmonic, it's bet between 7,000 to 8,000 RPM. So now let's cross-reference that to a dyno sheet. Now look, from 7,000 to 8,000 RPM, that's where the third harmonic starts to work really good for the engine. So when you think about it, it's perfect for a B16, B18, or B20 on a CTR cams, right? Or even bigger cams like Pro 2 because you don't lose mid-range because of that. That's actually helping you carry good power all throughout. That's really cool. And that's how you deal with the induction. And interestingly, on the D16 Skunk 2 intake manifold for the SOC, it actually has also 9 inches in runner length. So when you think about it, that's still 12.5 total induction length, right? So now let's reference that to the calculation, and it's here. As you can see, obviously it's 12.5 inches, so the third harmonic is from 7,000 to 8,000. And here on the dyno sheet, you can see 7,000 RPM all the way to 8,000, it's actually perfect to make a D16 or a SOC run really strong. And that's when you know Skunk 2 knew what they were doing. So because the Skunk 2 intake manifold actually gives a lot of good performance gains to the single overhead cam. This is one of the big reasons. And of course, when we port it, we're going to get even better results. All right. Now on the Type R intake manifold, it's just 7.5 inches in runner length. So when you include the port runner length or port length, it's around 11 or 11.5 inches in total induction length. So now let's calculate that. And here it is. So third harmonic is from 8,000 all the way to 9,100 RPM or almost 9,200 RPM. So now let's cross-reference that to the dyno sheet. Now would you look at that? Isn't that like almost perfect between 8,000 to 9,000 or 9,100 RPM? Boosting the power right there on the third harmonic is actually gonna be really, really good. And this is on a B16, this actually ran 12 sevens. So when you think about it, this is really good, right? And this is also why I poured the ITR manifold or even the Skunk 2 with that much taper. Because look at this, the acceleration rate between 7,000 to 8,000 RPM, that's crazy, right? This is why the manifolds I do look like this. Infusing more taper creates better or faster airspeed and that means more power and more torque, right? And of course, how much taper? Look at this. Skunk 2 did one better again, the Skunk 2 Ultra Street Manifold, which has 8.75 inches of runner length, so almost 9 inches, so like the P30. But look, this is as big as an ITB entry or the Velocity Stat entry, right? Yep. And this is way more tapered than we could ever port the Type R manifold. We'll just keep punching holes and welding it some more. And we've, we've actually done that before and it's a lot of work. So when it reaches that point, it's actually easier or better to just get the Skunk 2 Ultra Street manifold like this. Now on this Toda style ITB for the B series, this has about 9.5 inches in runner length. So you add that to the port length, you can calculate the harmonics. But because this has extremely way better or faster airspeed, this allows you to run a bigger cam because the longer duration, the longer the time the valve is open, the stronger it weakens the vacuum signal. So that's why 
when you run big camps on a weak manifold or a stock style manifold, you start to lose low end and people just blame the camps. Well, it's not really the camps. You're losing vacuum signal towards the runner. So it's not pushing in much more air, right? But hey, that's another way of looking at it, right? So now let's go to this. This is my CBR ITB that I converted for the single overhead cam. I mocked it up on a friend's VTEC engine, but here it is on my ESI non VTEC. And this actually has about 9.5 inches in runner length, but it's still depending on how much I'm going to extend it or not, because I'm still trying to figure it out. But of course, this is going to be calculated really well. And I mentioned this because a local shop one time used or tried ITBs and the owner said it doesn't make much of a difference than just a regular manifold but that's because they probably built it like a normal engine with a normal manifold and i just discussed about runner airspeed and actually the potential for running a bigger cam because it handled more valve duration or valve opening so don't invalidate itb just because of incapabilities right because come on when you think about it most of the engines that we see that make good power be it b series or k series runs itb from kinsler so hey and also this the 4ag 16 valve formula atlantic engine because locally everyone is fond of the 20 valves but maybe their history is incomplete they forgot this engine this actually makes around 240 crank horsepower so that's probably more than 200 wheel horsepower that's a something that's way stronger than a b16 right and it has itbs and as I mentioned, my car and reference my ESI, my D16A6 on the mocking up stage of the ITB, we're actually planning to pull the engine and do a build series about it. And actually this time share every single details to you guys. No secrets to be kept here. And so comment down below if you guys want to see a build series about this because we're going to dyno a PO8 manifold that stock, then port it and then the Askung 2 and then the ITB. And you can click here the, for the video that I made of my car or comment down below or on that video if you guys want to see a build series about this.